Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Ethereum. Dubious speculation. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also do have the premium list at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Prices are going up on Monday, so if you want to lock in the low rate, you have a few more days to do so. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, occasionally, I like to make a video on Ethereum where we do nothing more than dubiously speculate. Are there other types of speculation? Not really. There are people that will do, I guess, non-dubious speculation, but I don't think it's nearly as accurate as dubious speculation. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna systematically go through a few things. You can believe it or not, you can buy it or not. I don't really care, right? Just don't mind me, I'm over here dubiously speculating. You can choose to watch it or not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go look at Ethereum. We're looking at the natural log of the price over the 20 week SMA. So it's the natural log of price X over the 20 week SMA. You're probably wondering what the, what the hell we're looking at the natural log for. Oh, that's that thing, you know, you might have wondered, you never have to use again, but here we are, right? Log of the price over the 20 week SMA equals some number, let's call it Y. And we've used this in the past actually to, to try to get theoretical projections on where Ethereum was gonna go during the last leg of the cycle. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna get an idea of where could we go today and we're gonna speculate out a little bit. That's all we're gonna do. So let's suppose, and this is where the dubious speculation begins, Let's suppose that the, the extension from the 20 week SMA decreases every, every time. Okay, let's just assume that. And what we'll notice is that we've hit it a couple times, right? We hit it back in February, 2016. We hit it in June of 2017. We didn't even hit it, um, uh, you know, back in, in, in 2021, but maybe we'll go up to it sometime in 2022 because it's very unlikely we'll make it there in, tw you know, in 2021, just because we'd have to go, we'd have to go straight up to get to that line and probably not going to go straight up. So why do we assume a decrease is when we only have two data points? Well, we go look at our best friend, Bitcoin. And we say, you know what, if we look at the same chart, the natural log of the price over the 20 week SMA, what do we notice? Well, it decreases. The extension from the 20 week SMA decreases with time. Now, something to consider is that this type of analysis will not work forever, but it worked pretty damn well during the last leg for Bitcoin. We actually came up to this twice. We watched it happen twice. I said we were too far extended multiple times. We showed the risk levels on the private channel, but we also looked at the market cycle ROI. It was fairly obvious that we were extended. We said we're gonna get a summer lull. That's what we got. We said we need to hold the 20 week. That's what we got. Then we said clear skies ahead. I don't know, I mean, it looks like that's what we're getting. But this video, we're focused on Ethereum, right? So if Ethereum goes back up to this line, which it hasn't done since June of 2017, but if it were to go back up to that line, where could the valuation of Ethereum be? Well, the first thing that we'll do is we'll note where is it today? And this gives us our instantaneous top. Meaning if by some miracle, Ethereum went to this line tomorrow morning, what could be the theoretical limit before we would assume it is simply too far gone to go any higher? Once we get the instantaneous limit, we can then dubiously speculate on what might the limits be a month, three months, six months from now. Okay, well, let's start with that. So what we gotta do is we gotta look at the log of the price over the 20 week estimate equals Y. So Y in this scenario would be about let's just call it um, 1.10, all right? So we'll say the natural log of X over the 20 week SMA. Well, what's the 20 week SMA? Well, right, right now it's 28.89. Okay, so we'll say the log of the price over 28.89 equals 1.10. Where would that put Ethereum's valuation if it were to go there tomorrow? It would put it at 86.79. So what does that say? It says, that if the valuation of Ethereum were to just absolutely go parabolic and lose its freaking mind over the next day, the instantaneous valuation that would be too far gone to sustain a rally any further would be over $8,000. Now, clearly, I don't think Ethereum's going to $8,000 tomorrow, uh, but I, I would say it's, it's certainly very likely that it will make it to $8,000 at some point within the next, I don't know, you know, six months, something like that. 
it seems it seems very likely that it, it could make it to those levels. Now the question is, that's where it would be today. But what if it happens later on? Well, you might say, well, I don't want it to happen later on because the line is trending down. It might be your first inclination. But you also have to remember that the reference point at the 20 week SMA, the 20 week SMA is actually moving up. Okay, so let's look at this and, and, and just look at, say, what happened last year. And let's actually look at the October to December timeframe. So the 20 week SMA went from 300 to around uh, $500. Okay, so let's just suppose, you know, the 20 week SMA today, coincidentally, is almost $3,000. Let's suppose the 20 week SMA by January is $5,000. We're just gonna suppose that. So if the 20 week SMA reaches $5,000 by January, and then we continuously to dubiously speculate, let's go look at this line and say January, that would put it at 1.06. So while we're, we're changing the Y variable from 1.10 to 1.06, note that the 20 week moving average has moved up and it moves up quicker than the, the line moves down, and then that would put the valuation of Ethereum at a very modest $14,432. So what that means is that this, the, the, the valuation that this could reach by say January, and, 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 and it get to the point where it's very likely too far gone to sustain a rally further in the short term would be a very modest $14,000, okay? Now, clearly that would assume that the valuation of Ethereum moves up between now and then. If it doesn't, then the 20 week SMA is not gonna be $5,000. If Ethereum were to go sideways for the next two months and the Ethereum 20 week SMA stays at approximately $3,000, then it, you know, and we'd say one, it, it's equal to 1.06, and the theoretical limit by that time would actually be all the way back down at 86.59. So we're we're making some assumptions. Clearly, that's why it's dubious speculation. Again, if you don't like it, you can see yourself out. But that's what we do here. Now, from here, we can also speculate on well, what if it takes even longer? Right? What if it, you know, what if we're on some long track uh, to to get to these valuations, right? And and maybe I don't know if it. It's hard to draw these lines, right? But something like this, if it's just slowly going through um, and it's just taking a really long time, maybe we should change our, our initial reference point to be, you know, something like that. I don't really know, um, but let's suppose it does it further out. Then we know that while this would come down further and maybe be like 0.94, the 20 week SMA by that point could be very different. So let's suppose that we to go to like 0.94, but then let's suppose the 20 week SMA at that point is, I don't know, $7,000, then you're looking at a potential $18,000 Ethereum. So what does this mean? Well, generally speaking, it means that time is on our side. The longer it takes us to get somewhere, the higher we should ultimately go. The longer we consolidate, the higher we fly. Of course, all of this is very much dependent on Bitcoin staying healthy, Bitcoin doing well. Currently, Bitcoin is trading at a very modest $61,000. Um, clearly, we need to break above 64 k go back into price discovery mode during that time. The most likely path for Ethereum valuation against Bitcoin is down. I know some people don't like that, but that's just the way it is. The constellation price for Ethereum USD is that it tends to go up when Bitcoin goes up, even if the Ethereum valuation against Bitcoin goes down. Why is that not a bad thing? Because typically when that happens, whether it bounces here or down here, typically we get a very good bounce going into Q1 of the following year. So keep that in mind as we continue to navigate the cryptoverse each and every day. Um, so the Ether Bitcoin valuation right now is coming in at 0.062. I would say, you know, if I'm looking at this and saying, you know, what are some potential turnaround points in the event of Bitcoin having a sustained rally? We know that when Bitcoin has sustained rallies, the Ethereum valuation against Bitcoin bleeds. That's what we've been watching over the last several weeks. You know, 0.05 is certainly a possibility. Might that be the center line of here? I would say worst case scenario. And I mean, for me, this would be like absolutely worst case, worst case scenario would be 0.04. Um, I, I don't, I don't know that it'll make it that low. It, it could certainly turn around over here as well, but I would say worst case is, is 0.04 by the end of the year. And even if it did that, even if worst case played out, um, I still think it just comes back even stronger, right? So short term somewhat bearish on the ethereum valuation against bitcoin bullish on ether usd bullish on bitcoin usd we just know we have to pay respects to the king in q4 bitcoin's king ethereum's not 
Therefore, the Ethereum valuation against Bitcoin usually goes down in Q4. Um, so short term, not so optimistic on the Ethereum valuation against Bitcoin. Long term, I still think if Ether Bitcoin's going up. That's my speculation. In Q4, we typically have to just deal with a, a short term downtrend and then we can just continue on later on. You can see that rally continued here in 2020. You can see it also continued here in 2021. And essentially every Q1 and Q2, we've always seen rallies. Sometimes it's not always in Q2, but usually at some point in Q1, we've seen those rallies. Anyways, I just wanted to do a dubious, a bit of dubious speculation with you guys to give you guys my thoughts on the market. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, click the bell icon, turn on notifications where we do the premium list into the cryptoverse.com. Thank you guys for tuning in, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.